Good morning, everyone. Today we're gonna to be reviewing a new 3D printing resin. The resin I have here is called Grack Kit, and the type I have is a water washable transparent resin. If you're interested in it, there'll be some affiliate links down in the description below that will help support the channel. We're gonna be reviewing the resin based on a few set of criteria. These will be on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the best. First off, we have our torture ball test, which is using a ball with a lattice structure printed directly on the build plate. We have a stress test, which will utilize the ball as well as a bar of resin to see how much the resin bar can hold without deforming. We have a practical test to see how it handles printing such thing as minis, statues, and other things with posable parts. We have the odor test to see how strongly it smells, 10 being almost not at all. And then lastly, we have how does the color look after printing and long exposure to UV light, basically color fastness. Diving into the unboxing, the resin uh, does appear to come with a pair of passable gloves. They test it out fine near their gloves. Uh, nothing too special there, but the bottle of resin was sealed both in a plastic bag as well as having a seal on the inside of the cap. Now taking it out, I do have to admit, while not a reason to buy a brand of resin, I do like the ergonomics of this bottle. Uh, it's easy to pour, it's easy to handle, uh, and it's easy to store as well. Up on the screen, these are the recommended print settings. I'm using Chi2 Box and an Anycubic Photon. They have both a monochrome setting and a set of color settings. I'm gonna be using the, the color settings for these tests. There are some modifications I had to make for one of the tests from these to deviate from them, but I will get to those later. As per the instructions, I started by shaking the resin. And as I pour out the resin, I do notice that it looks very clear. Uh, it is still uncured, but it looks pretty good so far. And I can hardly notice any smell at this point. And so this is what it looks like as we begin our tests. We're gonna be starting with the torture ball test on the Anacubic Photon. One thing to note is that temperature is very important factor when printing with resin. So I've modified this printer to add a heater from another 3D printer, which will help keep the interior at a steady 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Now jump cut, our torture ball came out well. Looks perfectly fine. The color looks great while wet and, and I don't see any unexpected defects. Now, one thing to note is that there are supposed to be words on the bottom of this ball that looks like they were lost whenever printing. That could be due to the longer exposure time for the bottom of it. It could be also the fact that we had a set number of bottom layers where the words might have been lost. But I printed this ball multiple times and it's printed perfectly fine each time, except for the words not printing. So this ball printed fine on the build plate, no problems there every time, default settings. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this resin a score of a seven. Very consistent using default settings. Moving on to our next test is our stress test and we're gonna be bringing that ball back into play. So here we're gonna be putting the ball into our vise and we're starting with a diameter of this at 60.1 millimeters. We're gonna be turning the vise until we hear the first crack or see a break in the ball. And right there, you can see that we had our resin break before going too far down that road. And we're about at 54.6 millimeters. We're gonna go ahead and take it out of the vise. And you can see here is the first point of failure. And once that first break happens, basically each one of these small structures just crumble. So that was part one of our stress test. For our next part, we're gonna be using weighted bags of sands to test a bar of this resin to see how much it deforms under weight. 
We have our weighted bags of sand and a bar of resin screwed into a marked position on our workbench. And we're starting with 15 pounds and we're placing it very slowly on this bar to see how much it deflects. So I left this, I left these 15 pounds here for about 25 minutes on three separate tests and did not see any significant deformation after the initial bending. So I wanted to see how much weight it would actually take to finally snap these. And I ended up using a large amount of the sand that I had on hand and around like 30 pounds is where we had our catastrophic failure. So for the stress test score, I'm taking into account the torture ball and how brittle those small structures were. Uh, and even though it held a lot in the resin bar test, uh, it did deform quite a bit. And when it failed, it failed quite catastrophically. So I'm gonna give this resin a three for the stress test. For the practical test, I attempted to print a number of figures and minis uh, without much luck. Basically, whenever I printed them, they would not adhere to the supports. So I had to up the cure time. But before doing that, I was able to try testing this crystal dragon. It scaled down to print on this small build plane, so the joints were too small and fragile to handle moving but I was able to get a solid version of this dragon that looked pretty dang good. Now back to the figures, I was able to get them to print while adhering to supports by increasing the cure time from the six seconds I was using to 12 seconds. One downside to increasing the time is that the supports were a pain to take off and there was additional cleaning that had to happen afterwards. Now you'll see here, there's a little clouding to be expected, uh, but overall the print came out really well. It's still fairly clear and it looks well with a lot of detail in it. These were the settings I used for the practical prints. And while I likely could have dialed it in and lessened the cure time lower than 12 seconds, this is where I had the most consistency with things adhering to the supports. That brings us to the score. For the practical print, the resin loses points for having to increase the cure time from its recommended settings. But after increasing that, we consistently had good prints turn out one after another without too much issue. So for the practical printing, I gave it an above average of a six. And diving into the next one, which is the odor or smell, I confirmed with multiple people that they all agreed that the smell of this resin is fairly minimal. In fact, I believe it gives off the least amount of odor of any of resin that I've tried so far. So uh, this gives it a strong solid nine for lack of odor on this resin. Now for the last test, we have color. We've seen how color looks after cleaning, finishing, curing, but uh, I wanted to test out some extreme exposure to UV light. So I took some of the, you know, these broken dragon pieces that I had lying around and placed them in a mirror box that I created with a UV spotlight straight over it. And I left it for a full week to see how much yellowing or color degradation would happen. In this example, I have both the solid dragon that was printed with a standard cure time and the dragon piece, which was cured for over a week. You can see that the color difference on these is fairly negligible. There is some slight difference as far as clarity on the print, and that's mainly due to the type of cleaning that was done on the solid one versus the flexible pieces. So for the score for color, I would rate this as a solid nine. It maintained its color better than just about any transparent resin I've tried so far. So for our scores, we have four above average scores uh, with it excelling at color fastness and lack of odor. So would I recommend this resin? For some applications, yes. It seems just about as brittle as any water washable resin I've tried, so I'd advise against using it for any prints such as D&D minis or small things with delicate pieces. However, if you want to print something a little bit more robust and solid, like a statue or a you know very tiny cube with Albert Einstein's negative inside of it, 
I'd say go for it. I think it's a pretty good print and the clarity of it is really nice. So again, if you're interested, here were the recommended settings for this resin. Here are my settings that I use when printing the figures. There'll be affiliate links down in the description for the resin. And if you found this helpful, feel free to subscribe, leave a like, and thanks for watching. Have a good day.